And we are live. Hey, welcome to the Protectors, brother. Yeah, no, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Alex, you're a Marine. I am. How long have you been a Marine? 13 years. And now you're a Marine that helps out with Woody. I do. So tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, Woody's Foundation, uh, the Herschel Woody Williams Medal of Honor Foundation, uh, we honor, recognize, and serve Gold Star family members and the legacy of their loved ones that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, What we do is kind of have a a, a little outlet of... um, recognizing through monuments that we establish in communities uh, so that we have a sense of purpose for those communi- for those individuals and Gold Star families in those communities to be able to come and honor and uh, uh, their loved ones who, who didn't make it home to them. Uh, we had do outreach events mm-hmm. um, as well as we do education and scholarships. How did you get involved with this? So I met Woody about nine years ago uh, when I came home from my deployment in Afghanistan. In fact, he came to my my parents' house. Uh, met him, the first time I met him was in my living room, the house that I was raised in. And uh, it was a complete shock to me, uh, you know, and I didn't really know who Woody was. And, uh, and when we got to talking and everything, because both my grandfathers had passed away, um, uh, and when we were talking and everything, and he pulls out the Medal of Honor and puts it on, and like, of course, you know, I'm like, yeah. whoa, I didn't know this, you know. And uh, so... Long story short, just over the years, uh, I've connected with uh, Woody's grandsons, um, uh, Brent Casey and Chad mm-hmm. Graham, and uh, helped out as much as I can with them and Woody and the foundation, knowing what he was doing. And I just developed this passion and love for um, the nonprofit industry and community relations and, and just helping people. And so um, I always joked with uh, Brent and, and Chad, and I said, or even Woody too, I always said, you know, if there's ever an opportunity for me to to really uh, assist in taking your foundation to the next level, I'd be more than honored. Well, one day I got a phone call and asked if I was interested in, in a <laughs> position, and I said sure, and so I applied for it and, and went for it, and I just I, I gave it everything I got. And so, um, but Woody is like a grandfather to me. Um, uh, I love that man to death, and uh, I love his his vision and what he represents. And uh, and how he carries out uh, uh, his mission. So uh, I wanted to be a part of that. I'm in absolute awe of all of you, you know, and the organization. And I just found out about it what three or four weeks ago. And I'm like, you know what, we need to talk to you. But let's uh, let's backtrack a little bit more to you. Right. There's a reason that Woody came to your house. Why don't you why don't you talk about that? So um, one being a marine <coughs> and. Uh, uh, Brent, uh, one of his one of one of his grandsons, and, and my father had kind of served on uh, some veteran service organization boards, and kind of had a relationship and things. And uh, so one thing or another, they, they kind of surprised me with it. But um, uh, I think it was the fact that it just having some motivation and a, a morale boost mm-hmm. uh, from one me coming home from my deployment in Afghanistan two I was wounded on October 5th 2010 and uh, was still kind of having some struggles mm-hmm. uh, here and there and kind of uh, both physically and mentally and so I think um, I think by Woody kind of stepping in uh, at that moment in that time uh, really kind of helped put things into perspective and uh, and so I kind of wanted to to take that morale boost if mm-hmm. you will and, uh, and and run with it so uh, it's uh, it's been a game changer. Um, it has changed my life, and uh, and I, I really do, um, you know, appreciate everything that he's done for me. Even you know, just for being him. Well, and you know, that's the thing about you know whether it's it's post traumatic stress or whether it's getting injured or whether it's just getting out of the service and not right. having that mission. And now you're you're on another mission. Yep. And today, you're, where are we at? Uh, we are um, here at the 75th um, Iwo Jima Association reunion uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, a lot of war heroes uh, mm-hmm. among us today and their families, and uh, and we are in celebration of them and for them to be able to get together uh, with their fellow Marines and, and Navy sailors uh, here. And they uh, these guys. Kind of get choked up about it yeah, a little you bit. Could, um, you could get choked up all you yeah. want, man, because you're making me yeah, choked yeah, up. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, these guys are, are living legends, and and uh, and unfortunately, you know, we are we are at a time frame where there's not very many left, mm-hmm. and uh, and they are they are history, they are living history books. And uh, l- last night, I uh, 
was able to for for dinner time frame and everything and kind of I was able to sit with some of these guys at a table and it was like just talking to them I could mm-hmm. I could talk for hours and uh, listening to them tell war stories and uh, and then ask me about my service and like want to know about like everything that I mm-hmm. did in Afghanistan and and I had one individual actually uh, uh, one hard charger he uh, he said you know I don't know how you guys did it over there with all those bombs and everything underneath you he was just like I I envy you and I was like seriously like me I was like no sir <laughs> I was like you fought on Iwo Jima. Mm-hmm. Like, we, I would not be here today if it was not for you and your generation. Yeah. Like, I am you. You know, I'm carrying on uh, uh, the, the tradition of ensuring that America is protected. And I was like, you set the foundation. <clears throat> You're probably so, like me. When you get around, it's like this sense of awe. I did yeah. when I'm Woody, and then, like, today when I was coming in waiting around, um, and I came down and met you, and I see all the veterans, and I'm like, you just get this feeling mm-hmm. like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's 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 crazy. Um, and just, uh, I mean, w- we've been here. This is the third day of the reunion, and uh, on the uh, two days ago, we were actually at the Iwo Jima Memorial there in Arlington, uh, and had all the Marines out there, um, and, and and we had all of the Iwo Jima uh, veterans and their families. Uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Milley was there. General Mark Milley was there. Um, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, General Berger, mm-hmm. uh, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Black, uh, Louisville, Kentucky guy. <laughs> so uh, I, w- I was very fortunate to be able to kind of snag a few minutes of his time and kind of just you know, Kentucky, Kentucky, yeah. Louisville, and, you know, got to talk. So we actually had a really great conversation. Uh, really great guy, and so um, by having all of those um, Iwo Jima Marines there, I hope that the now younger generation of Marines, to include myself, mm-hmm. um, could take that moment in and really kind of understand. You know, this number used to be a lot larger yeah. in, in in presence, and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, and by having those. Um, senior leaders there uh, to be able to kind of show their support you know mm-hmm. as well and how important it is yeah. right and how we you know we cannot forget about these guys and uh, so it, there was it was a great turnout and uh, very thankful for uh, Washington DC police uh, for escorting all these guys and letting them you know get in and out so they're not mm-hmm. sitting in Washington DC traffic <laughs> um, but uh, you know and, and Woody um, you know Woody likes to make sure that, you know, everyone understands, you know, that he doesn't wear that medal for him. Yeah. And uh, and and he is their brother, too. Woody is, like, he's on it 100, you know, 365 days a year, it seems. Yeah. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is, like, you were young when you went to Marines, right? I was. I was 19. Yeah. And then when you look around, you walk around here, and for some reason, I don't know if you do it, too, but... When you see the vets, you see them as a young person, like yeah. in Iwo Jima. You see yeah. it, and you're like, it's like an amazing, like you're looking at someone who's, whose body's aged, but they, you could just imagine them there. Yeah. It's it's like a weird feeling. And I, and I would say if, if anybody has the opportunity to talk to any veteran from any conflict, and like someday our kids and their kids are going to talk to people like us that went to war. Right. And it's just, it's weird. Do it. You know, get out there and listen to these stories. Mm-hmm. And listen to your stories, right? Well. And it, even like last night when I was having dinner and, um, or you know, kind of hanging out with some of these uh, these heroes, the way that they talk, it's still like their tradition carries on mm-hmm. in the Marine Corps with like the <clears throat> language, the vocabulary, um, how they joke with each other talk and, smack, yeah. and talk. Yep, absolutely. And you got you got these guys, and and it was just. I'm getting goosebumps just like talking about. It. I mean, the, it was it was amazing experience, and I, it is something that I will cherish and never forget for Absolutely. having this opportunity to be here this weekend with them. Well, I, and I thank you and 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 Brent and everybody for letting me be involved with this. It's yeah, incredible. Absolutely. Well, one thing we were talking about a little bit before is how we love tattoos. Yes. And love tattoos. let's see your tattoo. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you can see it. But. And if you're listening, it, what it's the same. Will you explain it? Okay, uh, so yeah, so it's um, it's Saint Michael, who's the patron saint of protection, and uh, he is yeah, sorry. That's okay. Uh, um, and he is uh, stomping on the devil's face into the uh, side of a rock wall, and at the bottom it has 
a date that says 10 5 10 October 5th 2010 um, and we'll get to the date here in a second and then it had up here it has the rays uh, uh, kind of surrounded it and then it has a phrase etm and pugna um, and which means still in the fight uh, now there's a couple other different uh, uh, terms or, or I guess meanings out there for for um, for that phrase, but uh, I chose it for still in the fight, mm -hmm. and uh, and the reason I chose that is because on October fifth, two thousand and ten, I was involved in an IED explosion in Afghanistan, and uh, broke some bones and had a brain injury, and uh, when I woke up in the hospital, I didn't have anything like on me. I was completely you know naked. They cut mm -hmm. everything off and all that. Rightfully so. They had you were checking me out and all that. Um, but when I finally started to come to there uh, in the hospital, uh, I had a little bag sitting next to, like, my hospital bed and nothing else. There was nothing else in there. And so the only thing that was in there was my dog tag that had the St. Michael medal oh, yeah. uh, that was given mm -hmm. to me and, uh, and blessed uh, by a good family friend of ours prior to me leaving because that's what I was wearing around my neck. And so they cut that off and they uh -huh. put it in a bag. But that was it. So, like, all of my, like, you know, yeah. pocket knives and everything, like, that was all in my pockets and all that, all that was gone. And so um, I felt that there's a reason I'm still here today. And, uh, and by kind of seeing that sit in that bag right there, um, you know, it was, there was a reason, you know, that – because at, at first I really didn't <coughs> wear it. I, I don't like wearing stuff up here. Mm -hmm. I feel kind of, like, constricted. I usually just kind of hook it and put it in my yeah. pocket. But for some reason, uh, that was uh, one of the first missions – uh, that I went out on in Afghanistan when we had first gotten there, literally two weeks in the country, <laughs> uh, roughly. And um, I don't know, for some reason I just put it on that day, and 36 hours later we hit an ID, and that was the only thing that came back. So I felt that to have something a little bit more permanent uh, uh, for me to kind of, you know, remember or to show, you know, well, I think tattoos are also therapeutic. Yeah. You know, we were talking about I got tattoos all over the place, and a lot of them are just different sectors of my life. Yeah. And And that's the thing is I, I see a lot of veterans, and, you know, we could talk tattoos all day long because you want something to symbolize your service, your life, and everything. Yeah, um, I, and and the other thing, too, is, is once you get one, you get many. Yeah. And so uh, I've had to kind of take a step back uh, with still being in the service and, and the Marine Corps and ensuring that, uh, uh, you know, I stay within the regulations uh, <laughs> that consistently seem to keep changing, like, every four years or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I finally, um, you know, just kind of gave in and, you know, and just stuck mm -hmm. with, well, with you know, where I'm you... at now that, can, that can't be yeah. covered uh, or whatnot. But uh, I do have another tattoo uh, on my chest, but I do plan on uh, getting more. Uh, but... You know, I got 13 years in the Marine Corps. I figured if it went by this quick that hopefully maybe another seven will go It'll go, go by really faster. quick. It goes quick. Man. And then I can make a decision uh, at that point. But uh, I do know that, and I can I can promise this, regardless of my age, uh, when I do finally decide to get out of the Marine Corps or retire, um, I will I will finish uh, I will finish out my arm. So <laughs> That's awesome, brother. Well, I really appreciate everything that you're doing. Yeah. Not just for Woody, but, you know, you found a new mission. And you're doing it for your family. Mm -hmm. And you're doing it for your own mental health. And I, I just feel like you telling these stories helps. Maybe it'll help another veteran. Maybe it'll help someone else. Especially when it comes to the Gold Star families. Maybe it'll help them. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. is like So many people are hurting out there from losing loved ones or, or wounded soldiers and uh, service members. It just We need stuff. We need to tell their stories. Right. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Well, and, and that's the thing is because, and, and, and I, I'm a history buff, and uh, and I feel that you know. My generation and and the generations to come, is the next generation to start history. Yeah. And <clears throat> excuse me, and for us to kind of keep all that in and not share those tell stories, the stories yeah. not tell those stories, mm -hmm. that's that's history being you know locked up. Yeah. And, uh, and for us to be able to, to move forward in a light of ensuring that, you know, the Gold Star family members mm -hmm. um, are taken care of, uh, that we don't forget about their loved ones, we have to tell that story. And what do we do is we help 
them tell their story. And that's where Woody's Foundation kind of yep. comes in, is making sure that people in the communities and around the nation, one, know what a Gold Star family member is. Two, what that meaning, what, the, what, what does that really mean? Mm-hmm. And three, we show our honor re- and recognition for them. And I think Woody or Woody said there was, what, 47 memorials or 48? So, no, we currently have 60. Okay, 60, but yes. in 47 states, right? 45. 40, 45. That's what it is. I'm getting my numbers confused. Sometimes he and gets a little excited and motivated. No, I don't think it was. I think it's me. It's because it's me. I'm like, I, my number is math. Yeah, yeah, so no, we currently have uh, 60 monuments dedicated in 45 states. And then we have none in the nation capital. Yes, and that's what I was also here this weekend to do. I was on Capitol Hill a couple of days ago, politicking a little mm-hmm. bit to see where we can. Uh, to try another avenue to see what we can potentially do to get a Gold Star Families uh, Memorial Monument mm-hmm. here on nation's capital. Which and a we feel, one, too. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I, we, we had spoken about that. Yes, like, absolutely. I am on board for the uh, the GWAP Memorial, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so 60 dedicated, 45 states, uh, and we have another 68 in progress. Okay. So it's uh, it is extremely um, um, uh, a busy time for uh, Woodiness Foundation, but yeah. we love it because the fact that those numbers have grown so quickly over the last couple of years, mm-hmm. something is is something's happening and something is is going right because the awareness of the gold star families Mm -hmm. and and who they are and how they need to be recognized is starting to starting to come to light yeah good and and that is where we feel um that you know though those family members come first and by being able to again tell that story and tell that history that we feel that something is 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 happening and we want to take that even further you know i'd love to have a thousand monuments yeah you know all over the nation i mean well it's like you know i think woody and i were talking about it too it's like when you go visit a, a family member that died, you go to their grave. Right. Um, but with the Gold Star Memorials, it gives you a place for other people to gather. Right. And maybe you hear other stories. Right. It's that conversation. That's what we need. Right. Like real conversation, not like social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, it's, it's something for those family members to be able to, to come to and to be able to, you know, collectively honor their specific loved ones together mm-hmm. with other Gold Star family members. How, well, do, we, how do we get involved? How do you want to get involved? <laughs> yeah, you, you contact me is what you yeah. do. <laughs> no, uh, uh, so the Herschel Woody Williams Medal of Honor Foundation, um, you can Google it as well as, um, uh, or you can uh, search for hwmohf.org, and uh, there's all kinds of ways yeah. to contact us on there. Um, uh I would share give the, the message. I was, yeah. was going to say I would give you all the other contact information, but it, nah, it's just not share the, the time share the message. But yeah, you know? basically just um, you know, or you can search Woody Williams, yeah, and it would basically mm-hmm. link you right to where we're at. And we're so. going to have links on the bottom of the podcast. As okay, well, perfect. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, awesome. And then yeah, I'd, I can give you my information. Contact me directly awesome. if you'd like. Yeah, Alex, so. thank you, sir. No, thank you, thank you so Thanks, much. Brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank I had you. a great time. Me too. Awesome. <laughs>